Hello, I am Mastery Academy, and welcome back to your boot camp. It is certainly a very special day for me because now we are done with the basics, which everybody should be well aware of in day one. We are now done with the portfolio management, which was yesterday, and now for the next two days of boot camp, we're going to spend our entire time on the charts just discussing. And today, our goal is to discuss the lines on our charts, the colors. And I want to break down the exponential moving averages better than you've had so that you can understand how to make decisions based off of where the colors sit. So, as you guys know, when you see your chart on the DeLorean, it comes stock, if you will, with these five colors. And four of them it can be seen on screen right now. Yellow, red, aqua, gray, and dark blue. Now, if dark blue is too far out of the picture, the uh, DeLorean doesn't even render it. So, so in some cases, the dark blue is not even needed. In other cases, it will show up when it is needed. So in this example, we have the four shown on screen here. So we can see the yellow right there. We can see the red right there. We can see the aqua. We can see the gray. Now, remember that all of these values are exponential moving averages. I want you to think really quick at the term moving average. Think about an average like an exam, like a final score, like a final grade in a class. If you were to take a college course like me with some of those instructors, we had four tests. And each test was 25% of the grade. So, if you have this example, four tests, each test was 25% of the grade, and you fail one of the tests, what do you think is going to happen to your grade? It's going to drop very sensitively. Now, let's take an example and say you had 200 tests, and you only failed one of them. And each was worth... 0.5, a half a percent of your grade. Do you think one failed test would do a lot for your grade? Would hurt it very much? No. So I want you to I want I wanted you to know that because you got to think of all of these colors very similar. The yellow is the smallest. That is the five exponential moving average set to close. This is the 13. This is the 50. This is the 200. And of course, the dark blue that we rarely see is the 800. Now, I bring this up because the location of price in comparison to these lines is so important to your success with the DeLorean. Now, of course, this example just happened a little bit ago. And as you guys are watching this boot camp, this example is, is well away. So you won't be able to look at this example directly, but you can watch it in hindsight. This is a live example as this is being uh, recorded, this boot camp. And so here's an example of a buy signal on Aussie, Aussie Yen on a 30-minute trade. Now before we begin, let's think about the metrics here. Okay, We got a four-step check process, 30-minute trade. That means we're going to be using the smaller 15-minute to one-hour step-by-step graphic to make our decision on if we should take the trade. Now, if you go back to day one of the boot camp, we discussed immensely the step one, step two, step three, step four. And we discussed if we should take a trade or not. And so in today, I'm going to talk about type one versus type two trades, as well as I'm going to talk even deeper into them in terms of everything. So let's just start diving into this example. We get a buy arrow. Step one, we have to look at the two candles to the left of the blue arrow, which are these two right here. Step one says, is the red bigger than the blue? Sure is. Step two says, does the red line cut through both? Sure does. Step three, remember, the gray aqua or blue line below or cutting through. Notice the aqua cuts through. And then step four, did you make sure that there's no EMAs directly above price? Well, price was called at 69.78. There's nothing up here. We're good to go. So, that now leads me, 
that's a brief synopsis of day one. That leads us to now day three of boot camp. Today I'm going to discuss things like stop losses, things like take profits, but then also discuss the tricks that I use, the tricks that make my trades on DeLorean maybe more successful than your trades, what I've learned. Just things that are on my mind that are going to help you. So first things first is the arrow. When we get a blue arrow, in my opinion, we need to make sure that in any given situation, we are at least bouncing off of the aqua or the gray. So notice in this example, we're bouncing off the aqua. The people that take the trades that are far away from the aqua or far away from the gray have far less success. The reason they have far less success is because many times the market pulls back to what I like to call the magnet. The magnet is the aqua. The market loves to go rally, come back to the magnet. Rally, come back to the magnet. Rally, come back to the magnet. So on and so forth, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. And so I always want to make sure in any given trade that I'm taking any option, we can scroll through all of them, which we're going to scroll through a lot of them today, but I can take any option and I want to make sure that when I'm talking about step number three, when step number three under your training says, is the gray, aqua, or blue line closely below, remember we can add the statement or cutting through. I want to make sure without question without doubt that the or cutting through is there. That is tip number one nugget of the day, first of all, is making sure that when you take a trade, you get the aqua cutting through. Now let's start to elaborate all of this. So first things first, let's talk about type one versus type two trades. A type one trade is when you are looking at step number four and the question asks you, I'll read it verbatim to you, Make sure the gray aqua or blue lines are not closely above price. And we, of course, learned in day number one that on short-term time frames, we're looking at this answer to be more than 10 pips, meaning on step four, you need at least 10 pips or more room on those colors above you on a buy side in order to take it, and vice versa on the sell side. And then, of course, on the higher time frames, this number becomes 25 pips, and this number, of course, also becomes 25 pips. Okay, so when that is brought up and when we talk about that, the reason I bring that up is now we got to look at this example. Again, a type one trade is when you have lines above you on a buy signal or lines below you on a sell signal. And a type two trade is when you don't have anything. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, self, is this a type one trade or is this a type two trade? And I look up here and I realize Okay, I've got nothing up here. When there's nothing up above me in a buy signal, this is a type two trade. A type two trade has more brought into contention in terms of targeting than anything. Okay, a type two trade is actually the most advanced type of trade you can take in DeLorean, and that's why I bring it up now. So with that said, when we talk about a type two trade, we must target previous levels, previous zones of structure. So let's go through this now and discuss on this 30 minute trade, how would I have set up my stop loss, my target, all that sort of stuff. So we know right here, without going any further, that this is our entry price. We know that our entry price was called at 69.79 because that's where the arrow called it. It called it at the beginning of this candle. And if you don't know by now, your stop loss level is very simple. It simply goes above or below, depending on direction, the two candles that you're paying attention to. So remember, the two candles that we are always paying attention to are the two candles previous to the arrow. So we've got these two candles to the left of the arrow. So our stop loss level must go below these two, just a hair below, just a pip or two. I'm not talking about a bunch, just a little bit. So that shows you that we have 69.79, 69.67. Okay, so you know that's a 12 pip gap there. That's a 12 pip stop. OK, 
Okay. So now, as you zoom out here and look at this, now you have to start looking at the overall picture. Okay. Risk to reward ratio, we learned in day two. I think I pounded that in your head. This number, when you're designing your trades, must be over two. Must. There is no negotiation to that. So how do we take our trades? What do we do to look at our trades? Well, on a type two scenario, we are targeting previous levels of structure. So over here we have a zone, and I always draw my zones from body to wick. So that's our target zone. Okay, so you can see we entered at 69.79 in this example that I'm giving you. The bottom, the very bottom of the zone happens at, I can't get it to go down there, but it happens at 69.98. That's 20 pips. That's almost a one to two at the bottom of the zone. All you would have to do then is realize, okay, the wick is this high. You can always target the top, but understand that generally speaking, structure works in these zones. This is where we'll reverse, not always right here. We trade breakouts off the top of wicks, not reversals here. So we're targeting this overall zone, and our goal, again, is to find that one to two risk to reward ratio. So as we look at this, even though it won't snap, I don't know why it won't do that for me today. Maybe it's because of this being here. No, it's just being snappy on me. But as we do this and as we look at that, notice where our risk to reward is in the middle of the zone. Okay, top of the zone is 2.9. If I can get it to snap, middle of the zone is 2.4. We have the zone. This is a type two trade. So when you find your four step check process, we pass it here, enter there, stops there, type two trade target here. Now I'm not done explaining. The reason I'm not done explaining is the second thing I want to talk about, and then we'll continue to do this over and over and over again, is I want to talk about the location of the EMAs. How many of you guys feel that you know what the trend is just based off this picture? Well, advanced guys are going to know that answer right away because of one thing, but people that are newer, they won't know. And so if you were in an, if you knew that you were in an uptrend, don't you think it'd be smart to only look for blue arrows? And if you knew you were only in a downtrend, don't you think it'd be smart to only look for sell arrows? Well, of course. Well, there's a very easy way to do that. And it all has to do, and this is a boot camp first and special, the first time I've talked about this in depth. All it has to do is these two colors. So, in the chats, which color is higher, aqua or gray? Is aqua on top of the gray or below the gray? Well, it's obviously on top. Let me write this out so you have this. Okay. When the aqua is on top, of the gray, it's bullish. Okay, when the aqua, I'll say when aqua is below gray, it is bearish. Those are the only two scenarios, and if they're crossing over one another at the time of taking the trade, I don't recommend taking the trade anyway. So that leaves us with seeing this right now. Is the aqua above or below the gray? It's above it. That tells us we're in a bullish market. If we're in a bullish market, we anticipate that the moves, okay, that the moves to the upside, to the upside, to the upside will be stronger than the pullbacks. We anticipate, in general, this market to continue higher at this time based off of what we're seeing. The reason I bring that up is if you can bring that into contention now, things start to come together. We realize it's a type two trade because there's nothing above us. The second thing we realize is that we pass the four-step check process. 
The third thing we realize is that the aqua is above the gray, meaning this is a bullish market. We are looking at the upside of the market. These are all things you need to start looking at. So I'm going to sift through some examples here. And I want to start to show you some different discrepancies that may help you. Is the gray, or I'm sorry, is the aqua above or below the gray? It's above it. Okay, in this case, since it's above it, what do you think the best scenario is? Ignore the arrow. First of all, if the aqua is above the gray, you should be looking at blue or red arrows. Blue. Why? It's bullish. We're trying to trade with the trend. But here's the thing. And those that pick up on this are going to really pick up and take off with this. And those that don't, that's why I'm going to keep doing these charts. I want you guys to learn how to plan for DeLorean setups. Not wait till it's here. Plan for opportunities. How do we plan for an opportunity? Well, we think about the trend and the location of the DeLorean setup. I said very early on in this session that if it was up to me, I would only take trades that are cutting and near the aqua or the gray. Right now, this entire zone is not near or cutting through either of those lines. So how would I, how would, what goes on in Patrick's head for boot camp? Well, how I would look at this is I would say we've got aqua here and we've got gray here. The aqua is above the gray, meaning I'm only looking if I can help myself long, only looking for upward positions, only looking to buy Aussie dollar. Here's the catch 22 here. What you need to have happen is you need to have this market show its hand, come down to the gray. The aqua will be above you, the gray will be below you. The moment the market comes down to the gray, that's when you're touching the gray, you're looking for DeLorean setups. If you get a DeLorean setup at that time, what do you think the type of trade is? Type it out in the comments. If you get a DeLorean setup at that time, as this comes down, and it goes right here, what do you guys think the type of trade is? Type 1 or Type 2? It'd be a Type 1 trade. Why is it a Type 1? You're going to you're gonna still have your aqua above you. This is going to come down. The aqua is going to start to collapse a little bit harder. Okay, And as that aqua collapses, this comes down. You get a rejection off. You're going to only be targeting what line? The aqua. That's the power of the type 1 trade. You're just targeting the nearest line above you. A type 2 trade doesn't have a line above you. Okay, So if we continue to move on here, different scenarios. Let's look at this for an example. So, we get a blue arrow. Bringing everything together now, let's talk about it all again. Blue arrow, first thing we would do is go through the four-step check process. Now, if you're an advanced trader, would this pass your four-step check process, yes or no? No. The reason no might not seem obvious to some of you, but look at this red one. Okay, there's the arrow. Here's the two in front of it. The red, the red line doesn't cut through the red candle. Never deviate from the rules. Never deviate from the rules. So as I zoom out here, we know this doesn't pass, but again, I'm boot, we're boot camping the reason we're doing this boot camp is to get in depth. When we're live trading, we don't have time to do this because we're busy, we're trading. Right now we have time to do this. That's why we're in boot camp. We're learning, we're taking a step back, we're chiseling our ax. So we know this is a no, but let's discuss 
the scenario. First of all, is this a type 1 or a type 2 trade? That's what you want to ask yourself, pretending that we were going to take it. Type 1 or type 2 trade? This is a type 2 trade. Why is it a type 2 trade? Notice where the EMAs are. 1, 2, 3. They're all below you. Good news is the aqua is above the gray. That's telling us we are bullish. That's telling us we are bullish. We're only looking to buy. I like that. Since it's a type 2 trade, we now have to mark out where is our entry. Well, our entry, of course, as you guys all know, or is at the arrow. Our stops, as you guys now are well aware, is below or above, depending on buy or sell, below or above the two candles. So here we are just below the two candles. And of course, in a scenario of previous structure targeting, you're targeting up there. Okay. So this is what that position would have looked like if it had passed the four-step check process. Look at that. Do we take that trade if it passes the four-step based on the risk-to-reward? Come on, guys, make me happy. Yesterday was a big day about risk-to-reward portfolio management. And today is no different. Make sure this number says two or more. We are risking a little bit less, but we're not risking a lot less than we're gaining. Making this a bad example, not a bad, I shouldn't say a bad example, making this a poor opportunity to trade it. So again, you would not look to trade this example. Okay. Moving forward now. Moving forward, let's take a look at this. Start to get in the groove of understanding the location. If you saw this chart now, if you saw this chart, what do you guys think you should be looking for? A blue or a red arrow to start planning? You should start planning for a blue arrow. Why? Because you should start looking at a blue arrow around this area and a blue arrow in here. And the reason that is, is that the aqua, I know this is getting repetitive, but that's the goal of boot camp. The aqua is above the gray. And your goal, every single time, is to trade with the trend in pullbacks. So this is now hopefully hitting you where you can now start to plan. And how we're planning is saying, okay, we broke the aqua. There's no opportunities here. Nothing on the buy side either. Like there, there wasn't any opportunities to buy this either. But our next chance is off the gray. And on these pullbacks, it will create a type one trade opportunity. You will be targeting back into the aqua. But what I'm telling you right now is this is now giving you guys a shot at planning the trades rather than waiting for them to come to you. The market needs to come down to the gray for the next chance. The reason this tool is powerful is we can, at, in a split second, we can refresh and we can see new trades. And we can look at all of these new trades that we have potential opportunities on. Okay. So, speaking of new trades, let's discuss this one. Here's an example of another trade called short. Okay? Now, where is the aqua in comparison to the gray? It's above it. Your trend is underlying above, meaning bullish. Now, remember what I said. Earlier I said it, and you might have to watch this on recording because it was just a statement. I didn't type it out. But remember what I said. I said, if they are crossing, ignore it for a minute. Ignore the trade. This soon looks to be crossing. Everybody see that? I'm trying to circle these two. It's not working. Aqua and the gray. Soon to be crossing in terms of what we see. Meaning the aqua will cross below the gray. Did you guys know? Did you guys know 
that the reason I'm paying attention to the aqua and the gray is that the aqua and the gray actually represent the four hour shift. You know how powerful the shift candle is, everybody does. When the five and the 13 EMA cross, we're on a 15 minute here, look at the power of the shift. Look at this. Look at when the yellow right here. Oh. Give me a second, sorry. Okay, so remembering the power of shift, let me say that again. Look at this. Cross down, cross up. Now notice when the market crosses up, what I'm saying is the yellow is crossing above the red. Notice what I'm saying, the yellow is crossing above the red. Okay, it's shifting up. When the yellow crosses above or below the red is called a shift, up or down. Well, the reason I bring all of this up going back to this example we were on is that the aqua and the gray represent the 5 and the 13 on the 4 hour. Again, the aqua and the gray represent the 5 and the 13 on the 4 hour. So if I go to the 4 hour chart, I want you all to notice what's going on. We are getting close to the yellow crossing below the red on the four hour, which would mean we are getting close for the aqua. Need to refresh this. We're getting close for the aqua to cross below on the 15 minute. Again, the aqua and the gray represent the 5 and 13, and the blue represents the aqua on the 15 minute. This blue line represents the aqua. So remember, the aqua is our magnet. This crosses. That aqua and the gray cross. Where do you think our next stop is? Where do you think this market's headed to? It's headed down to here. Okay, so until it crosses, I would, in this example, through my mind, through a boot camp mind, I would play it safe. I would wait till it crosses. And then understand that you might get an opportunity to actually get a short position targeting back into here which would be targeting the 50, 5, 0, 50 EMA on the four hour time frame. Our goal is to not have to look at the higher time frames. And how we're able to do that is by bringing these moving averages into play. So again, the 50 and the 200 represent the 5 and the 13 on the four hour. It's enabling us to know what's going on trend wise on a higher time frame. So when I look at this, this has enabled us to know on a higher time frame, we are bearish. Cross back up, higher time frame, we're bullish. Cross back down, bearish. Cross back up, bullish. And remember, at the moments we are crossing, we are very cautious. We like to trade opportunities in the trend that are pulling back. That's what we like to trade. As we look through this, notice how the market comes back in comes back in right here. Notice how it came back in, exploded out, came back in, exploded out. It might not necessarily mean there's a DeLorean opportunity every single time. There's one right there, DeLorean. Exploded back up. But it does mean that you can start to find these. Okay, let's look at a different example. Okay, here's another example where we're about to cross. We're waiting on that cross. Obviously, it looks to be leaning towards the cross. So what does that mean? That means on the four hour, New Zealand Swiss is about to shift to the downside. And we're going to see at minimum go to its magnet, which is the 800, the uh, blue. Okay. Would you have taken this trade? No. Doesn't even pass the four step check process anyway. 
So looking back at this, now things just got a little bit more interesting because prior to this boot camp, you guys have known about four-step check and type one versus type two. But now suddenly you're understanding high time frame EMA correlation, as well as now you're understanding the difference of an aqua above versus an aqua below, which in terms of all this is just our trend. So remember again, your best opportunities, your premier opportunities, the best ones that we can give you through DeLorean happen with a rejection off of one of these two colors. Now that might beg a question. That question might be, can the step three color be blue? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Just understand that the blue holds much more weight and understand that the reason that I'm talking so heavily about these two is these are the ones that get the rejections and they roll out. When we get near the blue, okay, when we get near the blue, it actually won't even load back that far. But when we get near the blue, we'll go over to trading view. Go to New Zealand Swiss here. So I'll go down to 15 minute. I'll add those EMAs quick. Okay, now when we go back to the blue, I can scroll back to the last time. You can see it very vividly here. It came up to the blue for the first time. Notice how it dances around the blue for a while. It's not like here. Notice how it comes up and explodes off the aqua. It dances around it. Why? Because it holds more weight. It's a bigger moving average. Notice how it explodes off the gray. This is white on this one, but notice how it explodes off of it. When it doesn't explode off of it, notice how it breaks down, breaks up, okay? All the way till now, when we're about to cross. Understanding this is vital to your success because this is gonna help you to not take a trade when we're close to a shift. We don't want to take a trade when we're close to a shift. And what's that shift happening on? What's this shift happening on? This is a four hour shift. Okay. All right. Now, to bring it all together, another example. When they are crossing, when they are close together, remember I said ignore it for the, for the time being. Here's an example. Now this is teaching you damage control. When they are close together and they're just laying on top of each other and the price is not jumping off of it, you got to understand that you're probably, the market is trying to reset its trend and trying to figure out where it's going to go. You're going to have buyers and you're going to have sellers. It's obvious to me on this chart that there is a group of sellers up here and there's obvious, obviously buyer pressure down here and we're going up down up down up down we get a buy order I see a step one passing I see a step two uh, passing but here's the thing if you look close on step three what does step three call for there's a lot of lines going on here and you got to really look and you have to have an eye for this now remember if you guys don't see this we are paying attention to those two candles. So when we are looking at these two candles, your step one, is blue bigger than red? Sure, obviously. Step two, does the red cut through both? Yes. Step three, does the gray aqua or blue line cut through or sitting below? Well, I see the aqua cutting through, but does anybody notice the gray? Does anybody notice the gray? Well, notice how the gray sits above the red, but cuts through the blue. This might not seem like a big deal to you, 
This might seem like something you'd overlook, and maybe you just say, you know what? I'll take it anyway. Now, you can obviously go for that, and, and you can do your own thing, but here's the thing. If the market was going to jump off of the level it would, it wouldn't have had the power to break through and break back up and break back through again, so on and so forth. If you are going to get a true setup passing the four-step check, you must be cutting through. And by that, I mean all lines if it's near. So in order for this example to be set up correctly, the red would have had to be cutting through. The, the gray would have had to cut through the red as well, meaning the red's body would have had to be up here. That would have told me, from a logical standpoint, that we had sellers come all the way down, then buyers just took them out. And that would have told me that at this level, we've got buyers. And it's obvious that we do have buyers at this level. Look at this level. Look at the wick here. Look at the wick here. Look at the wick here. Look at it here. And then notice the same level to the right. Wick, 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 wick. And we're coming back up. Obviously, buyers are sitting at this level. But obviously, the buyers aren't powerful enough to take over and roll out. When I say roll out, I mean make us some money. So with that said, you want to focus on situations that are obviously trending and pulling back. Where in this case, look what happened just you know, hours before, six, seven, eight hours before this trade's called. Look what happened. We had a cross down. The aqua is below the gray. We're getting a blue arrow when the aqua is below the gray, not above the gray. If the aqua is below the gray, we have a presumptive assumption that we are in a bearish market, not a bullish market. So in this case, we get a blue arrow and it's rolling down, meaning aqua is below gray. You're contradicting your analysis. You want to keep these things as clean as possible. Again, you want to keep these things as clean as possible. You know what textbook trades look like. How do you know it? You simply go up here to the watch this button and you click it and you watch the training. The training is designed to get your eye keen to textbook examples of type 1 and type 2. When you are looking through these, it is important to remember that the market is not going anywhere. So let's do another example. New Zealand CAD. I want you to notice all three lines below. Aqua's above the gray. It should be fairly obvious to you guys that we are in a bullish market, not a bearish market. Again, a bullish market, not a bearish market. So we're looking to buy. Now I realize it's obvious that this doesn't pass the four-step check, and that's okay. At the time of me talking about this, Notice the circle is red anyway. We're not looking for trades right now anyway. But we can start planning for trades to happen once that bubble goes green. And what did I just explain to you just a little bit ago? When we are near that blue level, you look for opportunities. When we're near here, you look for opportunities. When we are near here, you look for opportunities. What does that mean? That means, yes, that's how easy it is. You guys sit around and you wait for a blue arrow right now on New Zealand CAD. You have it on your watch list. You put it on your watch list. And a lot of you guys are waiting for this feed to tell you what to do, when in reality, you need to be searching the market prior, scanning the market prior, in order to find out whether you are going to actually execute a position or not. Now, one of our members, one of our members had uh, created inside of IM Mastery Academy, had so willingly created for all of us to have a helping hand on TradingView if we want to look at other charts 
It doesn't, it's not DeLorean because, of course, he doesn't have the algorithm for the DeLorean, and that's totally okay. But he did create something that gives us the ability to see the EMAs. And so in order to have this, you go to just the, you know, I, I mean, I have a pro version of, of uh, TradingView, but you don't have to. It could be free. Just sign up for a free account on TradingView. It'll just have more ads on it, that's all. And under indicators, I can just search M-A-T-R-X, and it's M-A-T-R-X, and it'll, under public library, it'll show up, and I just got to click it. When I click it, it'll load it up on the chart. This enables us to start to look at what's going on. So now, I can simply shift over and look at the charts. Okay, I notice aqua above. Okay, we're sitting below. In this case, I see on Aussie dollar that aqua looks to be heading down now. We look to be more bearish. So I'm going to wait for this to cross in order to find plays. So meaning I'm going to wait for this market to come down, watch these two cross, wait for a pullback to short the DeLorean setup. I start to forecast and foreshadow what I want to see. Okay, Aussie yen I could look at. What do I notice on Aussie yen? I notice that I'm above all three. I'm above the aqua. I'm above the gray. I'm above the blue. I zoom in. What am I looking for? Plays off of here. Plays off of here. Plays off of here. But my first play is happening soon. So tonight, what do I look for? I look for a play off of the aqua. When you're above all three or below all three, you're in a type two situation. So you're targeting structure. When you're in between any of them, you're in a type one situation. You must target the line itself. Okay? So again, cutting back to the DeLorean and refreshing here. We need to focus on these EMAs. Because I see far too many just taking any given arrow, taking a trade and letting it go. And granted, people have success just taking the arrows. And you can go back in time and you can, you can look at different examples, even ones that we talked about, where the arrows, if you had taken and held on, eventually or immediately had good results. And I get that, but that's not the power of this. The power of this software is designing something that goes into our head, that is here in our head, and when we are talking about this, we are then coupling ourselves with an algorithm. We're not letting an algorithm, we're letting a strategy or a little arrow, whatever you want to call it, we're not letting that do the work. That's not our goal. We never want to feel like this arrow is doing the work. We went over this example just a little bit ago. Okay, so we went through more examples than I've probably ever gone through today in boot camp. You're going to have to watch this, I imagine, at least five to ten times to start to grasp some of this stuff. But this is in addition to understanding the four step check process, this is in addition to understanding the ins and outs of portfolio management. This is now looking at the EMAs and how they react on correlative time frames, but also how we are using them in terms of the trend. They are not just magical colors. We are using them to make decisions based off of direction. We're using them to make targeting decisions. We're using them to make entry decisions. It is used for all of that. So with that said, guys, this is day number three of your boot camp. We are now basically halfway there. We have a five-day boot camp here. And we are heading into day four tomorrow at Obviously, if, if you're watching this live, if you're on recording, you can feel free to just go to day four. But if you're watching this live, we will be on day four tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. So I will see you guys back here for none other than the RSI. We will be back. We will, excuse me. We will be back strictly on the charts again. No, none of my face, none of that. Strictly on the charts again for day number four, which is going to be discussing this guy down here, the RSI. How can we utilize that guy to make better decisions in our trading? So with that said, guys, continue to do what you've been doing. These rooms have been getting packed out. Continue to do what you've been doing. 
by letting others know about this boot camp. Invite them to get here tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Let's continue the momentum. Let's continue the learning, continue the education. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow night. I appreciate you so much for the patience today and understanding all of this education takes time. So write down your notes, watch it again, and I will see you guys back here tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening, guys. God bless.